The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to take a look here at the German DAX and also the FTSE. Uh, pay close attention to those folks because each of those made a 382 retracement overnight. Have not exceeded that as of yet. That number in the S&P comes in at 30. 77. So if we close above 3077, this market still has legs and it could go a lot higher. But if it doesn't, then we've got a chance that it could have some type of a more substantial sell off. I'll point a chart out here that Andy Piccioli sent us from over at the uh, across the pond over here. This is the old uh, thing from, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Hmm. Holy cow. Anyway, you see these median lines that we have here. That basically shows the symmetry that's there. Uh, the retracement, of course, uh, went a little bit above the 78% level, just about 82%. And now we had this big sell-off. And uh, this could be just nothing, folks. It, it really could mean nothing because we're seeing such great Andrews pitchforks. That's correct. Uh, Duffy, did exactly what they are. Um, when you add them to the Fibonacci numbers, they add up pretty nicely. But remember, folks, we have something out in this market that we've had before, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is this one that we're going to see in just a second, and that is the old Federal Preserve. They're out there with a lot of money, folks. So anytime they want, they can come in here and make these things move. Now, someone asked me a question. Why didn't they come in yesterday? Well, believe it or not, I put a call into Jerome Powell, and I got the recorded number and saying that if you're asking why we didn't go in today, it's to mind your own business. I have no idea. Nobody else does either. Folks, there's one book that I really love very, very much. It's a very old book, and it's hard to find. It's called... Uh, my Own Story by um, Bernard Baruch, and basically it is his autobiography, and uh, he was a true financial wizard. He was very, very... Um, very, very adept at what he did. And he, in that book, he, he mentions two things that are incredibly important. He said, don't be concerned on the return on your money. Be concerned on the return of your money. That means always be worried about how much you're going to get back. That's why when you're trading, you got to think in terms of how much can you lose, not how much can you win. Winners think, how much money can I lose? Losers think how much money I can win. That's how Las Vegas operates when, I, when, when Las Vegas was, op, was operating years ago. Anyway, remember that. The second thing was really, really important to me because I've never, I've never been involved in stocks. But in that book, he said the stock market exists for one reason, inflating prices to a very high price and suckers will buy it all the way down. And, folks, we've seen this time after time in some of these things, so be very, very careful because these things can turn on a dime, and being a technician is one way to protect yourself against un, you know, news that really doesn't mean very much, or if it does, you know, who knows? Look at the price. of. I'm going to put the price of Tesla up here, folks. It's just made new highs yesterday, breaking over $1,000 a share. Uh, we were down at 350 back on March the 3rd, so we tripled in price. Uh, you think that's not volatile? <laughs> anyway, uh, th this is more than the value of Ford and General Motors combined. Not that Ford and General Motors are doing very well, but my goodness, that's a heck of a that's a heck of a saying that you're able to do that. Now maybe they're going to pass up Mercedes and BMW and all the others, but frankly, I've uh, I've never ridden in a Tesla. I've sat in one and I've listened to the motor, which you can't hear, and I can't trust any car that I can hear. So I didn't think they were worth a uh, hundred grand so I first of all my mother would come out of her grave if I ever spent more than fifty thousand dollars for a car and believe me my first car I only paid two hundred and fifty dollars for it but that was a 49 Mercury okay let's move on to another one here and this is a question that someone just came to me and just a few minutes ago and that is the chart that we're seeing right now on the this is a 30-minute chart on the um, 
gold, August gold, and you'll notice here the question was, was that a head and shoulders pattern? Actually, it is a head and shoulders pattern, but the symmetry is really off a little bit. You'd like to see the distance between the left shoulder and the head and the head and the right shoulder equal, and this is, uh, this is stretched out farther. So you've got to be uh, very, very careful. The one thing you do know that if you get above 1750 in August gold, it certainly isn't a, a head and shoulders pattern. So remind yourself of that. Oh, by the way, today we're going to have Rich Anderson who's going to talk to us about the um, the grain markets. We had a report yesterday. He talked to a little bit about what's happening in Minneapolis, Rich's hometown, uh, where he lives now. Of course, he's from South Dakota. But we'll uh, we'll be talking to Rich about that. I happened to be in Fry's yesterday. And I actually got uh, a sticker shock. I looked in the meat uh, section, and they were having uh, T-bone uh, steaks on sale, three T-bone steaks, very nice ones. And I looked down, and they were on sale for $57, three steaks. I, I, I almost fainted. <laughs> I said, back to the ground beef. Anyway, I was really shocked to see uh, the T-bone steak selling at that price. The uh, price of pork was still down a little bit, but, boy, the price of beef has really gone uh, through the roof, and it looks like we're going to be getting more and more of that as we get through some of these things. And if these these virus things keep picking up, who knows what's going to happen, you know, to the next thing. Uh, you know, after they've taken uh, gone with the wind off the off the air, I think I've, if I've lost all interest in uh, following uh, anything that's happening in the news because uh, when you start tearing down statues and stuff like that you're breaking history apart and that's that's the fabric of a person of, of a country and uh, that's how our country was done and next thing they knew they'll be taking mount sarabachi off and uh, who knows what else they're going to be doing who knows we'll have to wait and see here so i am off my soapbox now and i'm not going to say anything more about that i do want to talk just a tad about a couple other things that i think need to be important i showed that picture of the uh, Federal Reserve. And also, if you'll take a look at what Shane has showed us before, the uh, the amount of Fed uh, juice that's coming out there is still present. Present, And uh, the main thing is you got to remember on this, uh, this point B down here, we were down there on March 23rd. If we go below that, well, there's something really wrong. So let's pay attention to that number. I mean, we're so far away from it now. It might even take three days to get there. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see if it's going to do that or not. So if you have any questions, folks, it's 877-927-6648. Uh, the Grain Report evidently didn't do much because the grains are very, very quiet uh, during that time, and we'll be able to talk to more about that to Rich Anderson when he comes on uh, to visit us. Now, uh, we have a question about the Bitcoin. I want to get that up here so we can take a quick look at it. Uh, it's backing off a little bit from a very high level of 10,000. We'll get this up here so you'll be able to take a quick look at it. We're trading it around uh, 9,300. Folks, there's going to be a lot of support if it gets down to 8,000. Um, and it could very easily do that because we have a potential triple top up there at 10,000. And uh, if we get it, and once we close above 10,400, this thing could really get moving if, in fact, it does. So uh, the key, key is to watch that price. At 10,400, and then the downside, watch 8,000. That's about 1,300 bucks from where we are right now. And in Bitcoin, that's not a lot. 877 927 6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've posted the banking index up here because the old movie, remember, uh, All the President's Men, Follow the Money, Woodward and Bernstein? Look at this beautiful Gartley pattern, folks. It's got everything in it that tells you you got to be short. Perfect ABCD right at the 61% retracement. Uh, really good news, and the market you know, doesn't react to that good news. That, that usually means that there's going to be some type of a downward correction from this level. I, I get the question all the time. Well, not all the time, but usually every other day. Have I seen stuff like this before? Folks, if you were here in the market 20 years ago, uh, back in the old dot-com bubble, you saw stuff that was so much different. I mean, it was wilder than the day. You talk about Hertz going from two dollars or twenty cents, whatever it went to five. How about how about companies would increase by fifty percent and didn't even have any sales? You know, I mean, we saw those over and over again in those things. I mean, there were you know household names at that time: WorldCom, Global Crossing. You know, uh, it was just uh, yeah, Sycamore Networks. I mean, all of those were all just going, and there were hundreds of them. And I knew at that point we would never see anything like that again in my lifetime. But by golly, look what's happened. It's 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 not nearly. I mean, what's happening now is not nearly as bad as you know Tesla going from you know three fifty to a thousand dollars a share. That's nothing like when the stock went from you know ten to one hundred and fifty. I mean, they, these were crazy. I mean, this was this was nut. That was nutsville back in those days. You know, this isn't the same thing that we're we're seeing here now. This is. Uh, uh, this is probably related to what the Federal Reserve is, but here again, I'm not even sure if that's correct. You know, I'm a, I'm a technician, so I'm a little skeptical about anything they try to tell me about some of these things, and so I'm uh, just leave my uh, leave my options open and just keep an eye on what I think is happening in some of these markets. That's all I'm looking at. Now, speaking of markets, and I think something that you know, no one pays too much attention to this, but by golly. Folks, we're having some serious impl impl implications here in the Treasury bonds. I want you to see this. Here's the daily Treasury bond. 
Yesterday, the high that we made at that 180, excuse me, 178.02 was exactly 61% of the high that we made back on the 23rd of April. Now, if we get above that, now that's a five-day rally, so that means we should have a correction. And sure enough, we're already down a handle from that level at 77.02. So if we get above that level, then it's going to look pretty good. But remember, looking at these on a longer-term basis, if you'll take a look here at the long-term monthly chart in Treasury bonds, just get this up here so we can look at it closely. There, there's a three-drive pattern, folks. This, this started in 2012, and here we are eight years later. It's a perfect ABCD pattern up there uh, when we hit that 190 level. And uh, remember, that's when open interest was dropping like crazy, and we were yelling and screaming, you know, something's not right, something's not right. And speaking of that, you know, something's not right again when you had the nasdaq you know take off like a ruptured duck yesterday and then on the day before and then gives it all back with increasing open interest that means the people that were in that market uh there were not very many that was all short covering but by golly yesterday uh somebody came in and said uh oh let's pay attention to this market because there's a lot of things going on in these markets whenever the market drops like this when you see a drop of six percent in the stock market you have to pay attention to that folks i mean 1800 points was 1 1.6 18 of the worst down move we've had so far, which was 12. So that's 1,200. So the next one we get will be a 2,300. So we'll see oh, on the upside. It could be 2,300 on the upside, too. We really don't know. So that's the, the main thing of what you're keeping in mind here. Okay. Another one I wanted to mention to you is just get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. Here is the Treasury bonds on the weekly basis so you can see them a little clearer. You'll be able to see here that we got up to that 190, uh, 191 and a half level. We backed off a little bit, and now we're getting ready to determine whether we're going to roll over or not from here. Folks, when I first started trading bonds back in 76, when they first became available, that was uh, 1976, and I think it was near the near Christmas time, as I recall, uh, they were trading at 54 bucks. In other words, the interest rate on the bonds was around 12.5%. It was a 6% bond, and uh, I believe they were trading under 50 at one time. Mr. Z would probably remember that, but I believe it was right near the right. They were about a 50% discount, and that's when interest rates were. You know, we had a T-bill rate of 12%, but that all changed. You know, that that market went bullish on August 9th of 1982 and never, never looked back. Okay, someone's asking a question. Um, uh, never ending expansion. Yes, you can go keep taking 1.618, 1.618, and keep going because that's what happens in some of these markets. That's why 1.618 to me, folks, is so very, very important because once it gets above there, I frankly don't know where it's going to go, and I don't really care. I just stand aside. And, uh, you know, not even not even paying attention to it. In fact, today's market in the gold market was a perfect example of that. When it hit that number of uh, 1749 and a half, that was a 1.618 number. And as long as we don't get above seven, uh, 1749 and a half, uh, gold should sell off a little bit, whether it does or not. You know, we have to re wait and see if that's going to, to be the case. So just remember, folks, it's all about how much money you don't lose not about how much money you win. That's the key to remember. Um, the, the fact that we had this big drop, it really means something. You have, I mean, people weren't even, they weren't even concerned with it yesterday, watching it on the tube. I mean, just, oh, it's all down 6.6%. Well, when you've been straight up since March 23rd, why would you, why would you not be concerned? When will they be concerned? If you get a back-to-back -back of those numbers. In other words, we've got a Friday coming in here in a down week, so I, anything could happen. But if we're down hard next week you can uh, you can uh, bet that they're going to start thinking about you know what's uh, what's going to be happening and that will give them another reason to uh, you know to challenge everything that the administration does so it's uh, we'll find out what happens but w whether these things with the coronavirus are going to be coming back to roost or not uh, we'll have to wait and see but you know there's things a lot more worse than than uh, you know the dying folks and poverty's one of them believe me I 
you rather I'd rather be dead than be than be really super poor, and I don't want to go through that. So just remember that there are things that we have to get done here in this economy if we're going to move forward. Um, you know, you stop and think what's happened to Sweden and some of these other places. Sure, some people are going to die, but those are old people. Raise your hand, Larry. And those are the ones that are in major danger. And I try to stay away from danger. But that's my that's my situation of what I'm looking at here. We're going to have Rich Anderson here uh, on the show in just a little bit. There's one other chart that I wanted to show you, and I'll get it up here. Oh. <clears throat> just a second here, and that's this chart from our friend. Uh, hold on just a second. What happened to that chart? There, it, here's the one that I really. This is the one from Stan Harley that is really, uh, really interesting. Because when I look at when I look at this chart and I see all these Fibonacci numbers coming in, and I'm looking up in the far right corner, and I see 2020. And if you look at since 1874, look at the big crash of 1842, 1859, 1932. You don't even see the 1987 crash in here, folks. You don't even see it in here. And so this is where we are up in these areas right now. Uh, we're at 233 years from, uh, 19, from 1784. So whether this means anything, I don't know. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Rich Anderson. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Rich Anderson, Anderson Capital Management, on the line. Richard, are you there? You bet. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Well, I'm okay, buddy. You know, after 47 years of friendship, I actually have talked to you more in the last two or three days, and I or last two weeks, and I have in the other 47 years combined because we were certainly worried about you living in Minneapolis. Can you tell the folks what you're going through there as far as uh, safety and, and, and what you're seeing is happening in the, in the city itself about taking the police away? Do you have an opinion on it, or what, 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 how are you and Lisa handling it? Well, it started with an egregious um, death of a person, but then it, it got out of hand uh, with, you know, riots on Wednesday and Thursday, and which ended up burning 67 buildings and, you know, 530 businesses. And a lot of those businesses are small businesses started by immigrants. And, I mean, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's just an atrocity. We're, we're, you know, we're in the we're in the outskirts, and so it's not an issue. But if you're uh, close to Lake Street, mm-hmm. it was a very big issue and a very scary issue. Mm-hmm. So we're just, uh, you know, waiting for things that you know, getting rid of the police isn't the answer. Yeah, we need to uh, maybe, you know, make things better. But, you know, they've been working mm-hmm. on that for years. Mm-hmm. But turning down all these businesses and stuff, you know, so it, it created a, mm-hmm. uh, a food desert, you know, because of the seven grocery stores in the area. Six were burnt down. So now where are the people going to get their food? Where are they going to get their, their drugs mm-hmm. that they need, their prescription drugs? It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's very sad, very disappointing. Yeah. Did they reach the Mall of America? I mean, it's one of the largest malls in the, in the world. Did, did, what happened over there? That's not too far from where you are, right? Well, that, you know, that's eight or ten miles away. But, you know, they boarded it up. Basically, they suspended all public transportation. And so mm-hmm. without the light rail and without buses, uh, made it hard for people to get around that uh, wanted to mm-hmm. raise a little ha- havoc. Okay. Hey, we've got a caller on the line from New Jersey. Jeff, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you? Fine. You have a question for Rich? Go ahead. Yes, I do. Um, uh, there, I noticed there are many uh, green-related reports on uh, USDA.gov, and I was wondering if you could uh, tell us what the important ones are to um, well, you know, keep an eye on. The, the, um, the, you know, the report yesterday was much to do about nothing. The changes were five or ten million bushels difference. It's, it's, it was a non-event. In, in the agriculture and the grains, for the next four weeks, the, the key thing is, A, the weather and how hot it gets and how much rain we get because the average day of the need of corn for moisture peaks about the middle of July. That's that's why you see volatility peak in the middle of July. But then the, the crop report to look at is at the end of the month where they'll come out with the first acreage estimates because with those acreage estimates, is then you do a multiplier times your estimated yield. And so that's really going to be the key. Yesterday's report was a non-event, just a yawn. So there's a report at the end of the month, and then keep an eye on the weather. That's the real critical issues. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. You bet. Okay. Rich, speaking of the weather, anything in your uh, crystal ball that you see possibly to take a look at? Well, I mean, we have some heat coming in next week, and some areas are starting to get dry. But our, you know, corn carryover is, is at such an extent that we need this heat to get really serious if, for the market to have any major moves. Um, you know, there isn't much risk premium built in for a weather event because there is such a, a large carryover. But, you know, weather can change quickly, and then all of a sudden the markets come alive. But the volatility this year in corn, as an example, is relatively low, historically low, and that's because of the large carryover. But, you know, a weather event can become a bigger and bigger just, you know, in a few weeks' time. So that would be the thing to look for. You just mm-hmm. got to trade these markets technically, whether they be agriculture or, or equity, and not think about, uh, you know, the fundamentals. The oh, fundamentals, which, I mean, look at the stocks. The fundamentals, uh, look, they're actually going to give new issuance of stocks for Hertz, which is going bankrupt. 
that puts you at the bottom of the line. It you know, none of it makes sense anymore. Yeah, I know. What about wheat, Rich? Uh, what do you feel about wheat? We got to have some support down here at four ninety five a bushel. Um, well, in, in the, the wheat report yesterday, the world numbers actually. Uh, that was the only thing that that showed an increase, and that was slightly negative. But on the other hand, we have some weather, you know, some dryness occurring that could uh, crimp the yield. So I would have to say on the – you're talking to Chicago wheat, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I suspect it's going to hold in this level be, mm-hmm. just because, you know, world stocks are talking about a year from now. And the weather thing is a big enough of an issue that, that it's it's a problem. In the mm-hmm. soybeans, uh, there's been more Chinese buying of beans down in Brazil. Part of that has to do with the fact that they had some cargo ships down there that were supposed to load sugar, had some problems with the loading of sugar, so they just switched them over to soybeans so they didn't have to pay to merge on those ships. Mm-hmm. What about the cattle, Rich? I mean, by gosh, I went to I went to Fry's yesterday, and I, and a three pack of T bones was a fifty seven dollars. I almost fainted when I saw it. <laughs> well, hey, we got a we got a caller, uh, Mr. Z. You on the line? I am, sir. Go right ahead. Ask Rich your question. Good morning, Rich. John here. Good morning. Hi, John. Rich, uh, could you uh, please share your thoughts on the following topic, cattle futures? Rich, in the wake of that Kansas uh, packing plant closure, the fire last August, and then the uh, the COVID-related shutdowns that have occurred since, I am hearing, and I don't know if it's true, but I'm hearing or understanding that the volume of cattle uh, run through packing plants uh, is close to 90% negotiated, only 10% the cash market. If, is that true, and will that lead to uh, essentially a failure of the uh, CME cattle futures contract since there's basically no cash market left? Could you address that, please? Uh, well, I think Senator Grassley and the United States Senate is looking into this, amongst others. The... Uh, and you, you notice that the Department of Justice uh, filed a complaint against uh, some of the poultry producers for price fixing. Yeah, we, we built up a backlog of over a million head of cattle uh, because of the packing plants. In the, I mean, at one point we had 21 different packing plants of cattle and hogs because of the COVID that were shut down. And now they've had to slow the chains down. The, you, you make a very valid point. I mean, I think that they, they were just, they were making fifteen to $1,800 a head, and they were paying next to nothing to the farmer. It was so bad that if you went to a sale, you had to have your trailer locked in case they put some little pigs in the back. Uh, I mean, because <laughs> they cost more to feed than they did to kill. I, I mean, it's just oh, ridiculous. Um, but Senate is looking into it, led by Senator Grassley Violet. Hey, stay with us, John. We'll be right back after the break. 877-927-6648. The gold market has taken off topside the large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back with Rich Anderson. Rich, one of our questions from one of our listeners is, uh, are we going to see some type of uh, super inflation like we had back in the, the 70s and stuff with all the money the Fed's pumping into it? Do you have an opinion on that? Well, Actually, you know, there's a study that was done in England, and they were looking at receipts, you know, processing data. And there's been a relatively sharp spike in inflation for the things because there's been such a reduction in in supply. Mm -hmm. The money eventually it has to go someplace. I mean, that's why you're seeing things like people actually considering buying new stock. So they're the bottom of the totem pole in a company that's going to file bankruptcy. And what gets mm -hmm. wiped out first? The new stock. You know, so, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's an example. And don't forget, you know, there's always the fear of missing out. And so right now it's focused in, in stocks because that's, you know, that's the, the sports betting. Since there's no sports to bet on, they're betting on mm -hmm. stocks. But remember Sir Isaac Newton in the South Sea bubble. Yeah, yeah, he, he lost he everything. Stock, I remember that. <laughs> made, he made 7,000 pounds. He got out, waited a month, couldn't stand it, so he got back in and ended up losing 20,000 pounds. And he refused, he did not allow anybody to mention the word South Sea ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's Old. the smarter guy as you're going to find, you know. Yeah, he, he was one of the best ones, that's for sure. <laughs> Yesterday's wide range in the S&P should give everybody caution. I expect that we'll probably see that eventually work its way back down towards 2,800. 5% mm -hmm. moves were the norm back in March. Mm -hmm. This, this is, though, is, a, is an alert that, you know, things might be changing for the moment. Yeah, and that gold market's starting to perk up, too. You know, we're trading around 1750 We're not very far from a breakout, $25 up, and we're, you know, going to be breaking above that 78% level, and that's going to be pretty bullish. So uh, that might be a The, the, uh, the problem percent. with inflation, Larry, is you can have a lot of money, but if you don't have it turning over, then you don't get the inflation. So there, there's mm -hmm. a lot of money going out there right now, but it's mm -hmm. not turning over. Once yeah. we get back to normal, it'll turn over, then the, the inflation will be, will be great. Keep your eye so, on copper uh, as an idea of how well the economy gets back on its feet. 
Yeah, I remember we used to watch the velocity of money all the time when I was trading in Chicago and stuff. But my gosh, they don't even pay attention to the numbers anymore, do they? It's just amazing how they uh, have the soup du jour of what they're looking at. So uh, everything changes, but they remain the same. That's for sure. Rich, the corn that's market. That's why you have uh, to look at the chart. Yep. The corn market. And trade what some- you see, not what you want to see. <laughs> May a good a good good moniker. Uh, the corn we're uh, up above the uh, we, we have three higher bottoms now. It's still relatively narrow ranges, but uh, is there still some chance of a, a weather problem in corn? I mean, we've just got this thing planted, and every year we seem to have at least one weather scare. Is there anything with the anchovies that you're looking at that might uh, keep an eye on? Well, I think you keep an eye on it through the middle of July because that's the moisture need. And and so probably around the 4th of July, you'll have a weather forecast that will cover through the middle of July. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you'll know if there's any questions. So after the 4th of July, if we don't see any forecast for weather that would create problems, that's probably all you get. Um, I would like to see at least a 38% rally from this low that we saw recently back in April in the... Um, <laughs> January highs, but I, I don't think you're going to get much more than that. And, and then you're going to have to go through the September, you know, harvest lows. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of, and I produce corn and I'd love to see a big rally and tell you that I think it could go to $4 or 450 but there's just, the carryout is just too big. Mm-hmm. We need the oil prices to stay up. The ethanol shut, plants shut down all over the place, so we weren't using corn and ethanol with oil price rally. The ethanol plants are starting to come off. You know, the rig count today will be important to watch because some of the well, all the shale cut guys got killed, and some of them are starting to come back on. So it, it, it's going to be an interesting day. Do you think this top up here in crude oil at forty dollars a barrel is going to hold? I mean, what? Uh... It certainly came off pretty good. We were, we came down, you know, ten percent off that high in just a matter of a day and a half. So there, were, and of course, we rallied back a buck and a half so far today. But um, what what's your feeling on oil here? Is this Saudi thing going to hold together? I I think that uh, the you know the the thing that really drove it back up a bunch was the Saudis took an extra um, reduction besides the one they had agreed to with with the group of people. But, you know, there's a lot of cheating going on by the smaller members. And as I said, the rig count today and the shale companies, you know, turning back on in this country because they're really the flex producers. I think this for the next couple of months is probably going to be fairly close to the top because keep in mind the ten top 10 percent of the barrel is jet fuel. And we're still not flying any major amount of planes. And, and so even if everything got back to full, that's only 90% because the, the airlines are, you know, in con- they're like maybe a 5 10% would be generous. So that's still 9% drop in demand. It, and we just have a lot of supply. We have a lot of uh, oil still on float in the ocean. Mm-hmm. And it costs $2 a month to store it on a ship versus, say, 50 cents a month per barrel. Mm-hmm. In a in the tanks on land. Okay, uh, Rich, we have one other question for one of our listeners, and that's regarding your safety. Uh, are you safe there where you are in uh, Minnesota? Do you have any oh, I, concerns? I, I, absolutely. It, it's just you know things have gone off the tracks, and and they'll get they'll get back on. I mean, there are reforms that probably need to be made. There's leadership mm-hmm. changes that need to be made, and they'll figure it out. It's just going to take mm-hmm. them a while. A little disturbing yesterday that uh, the, the governor let some protesters tear down the statue of Columbus over at State yeah. Capitol. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, they, they see it, that, I see it everywhere. That's kind of how it worked in, in Germany in the 1930s, and it didn't turn out yeah. well, did it? Yeah, well, you know, they're always after the Italians, Columbus. They took the Pesavento statue down here in Tucson. They took it out about three weeks ago. But I didn't say a word. I was really quiet. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks for <laughs> – I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Hey, thanks for joining us today, pal, and we will uh, we'll have you back on soon. But be safe, and I'll, I'll chat with you later today. All okay. right. Good talk. Yeah. Bye bye. You bet. Rich Anderson, folks. Anderson Capital Management. Okay. Let's move on here to uh, 
the next one we want to pay attention to here. We've got the crude oil had a nice rally up here to almost 37 bucks a barrel. Uh, that should be it as far as a rally. If you like Fibonacci numbers, that happens to be one. So as long as we don't get above 37 bucks, it's got a chance here, you know, to uh, be some type of a uh, minor top, uh, if nothing else. I do want to mention one other thing that I that I think is really important is, and that is let's get this up here one more time to remind us. Uh, of where we are. Let's just get this up here. Oh, where is it, Larry? Hold on just a second. All righty. This is the one. Hold on just a second. It's the wrong chart. I'm going to get it. Just be patient. Oh, that's not the one. Doggone it. Where is it? Shut the front door. And here we go. This is the one from our friend Larry Williams. Going back here, way back in March, we talked about this. And you'll notice here this market went straight up, as you can see here. Uh, you'll notice that the high was due sometime in uh, late May. And maybe it came in or not, I don't know. But this has been a really good bottom that we had in here. And whether we're going to continue high or not, I don't know. But that cycle projection has been met. And we want to pay attention to what's going on. The key number to watch today, folks, is uh, 3078 in the S&P 500, 877-927-6648. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the open call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to bring this one chart to your attention. It'll give you a pretty good idea. Of course, the, the rock and roll of this uh, stock indices is the NASDAQ. If you notice here, 
Uh, we just posted a chart here with the three drive pattern coming in at a 61% retracement of the mid morning high yesterday. And then also it's a 38% retracement from the high that we made uh, early uh, this year at 10,160. 10, yes, 10, then we had a slight correction down uh, about 10,000 bucks down to 9580. Can you believe that in one day at a move of $10,000? Shut the front door and raise the rent, a scale down buying program on that one didn't work out very well, did it? So pay attention. When I mentioned that price of 3077 in the S&P, folks, so far the high has been 30 uh, 7675 that was the 382 retracement so that's a very important number because we don't get higher than that and we start lower we're going to see some more uh, to the downside on this and remember any market that can take away 1800 points can also give you 1800 points so make sure you use stops in these markets because if you don't you're telling mother market that i know more than you do and don't ever let yourself get fooled into that trap. That just doesn't work very well. Uh, remind yourself here that they also, if we get a, uh, we had a nice move here in the euro last night. We got up to a really nice fit point at that uh, 113.60. We backed off about 30 pips from that level. So, so far that, uh, that one is working relatively well. That's a, actually a pretty nice, oh, should push this up here so you can see it. It's a really nice uh, 135 pattern. And uh, hold on, I posted this before it happened. Let's get this up here. And you'll see here they had those lower tops in the euro, and that tells us that we, we should be heading to the downside in the euro, which means the dollar index is perking up a little bit after being, you know, basically massacred for 11 days. But it's holding support now just a little bit below 9,700. Above 9,700, it reinstates itself, and uh, that would tell us that we have some more to go on the uh, euro to the downside, U.S. dollar index to the upside. Remember, folks, it looks like it's going to be a down week on a Friday, so pay attention, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.